Well, things still just aren't cheap in this economy. Sure, you can go to a flea market or a garage sale and negotiate your final out-of-pocket costs, but how about a hotel room, mortgage, medical bills? According to a new article in the Wall Street Journal, everything is more negotiable than you think, and getting in the right mindset can save hundreds to thousands of dollars on everyday costs in your life. But is it really that easy? Let's dive in with our panel. Joining us now, Eric Rittmeyer, a mental toughness expert and author of The Emotional Marine, and Ricky Carruth, a real estate expert. So, Ricky, I'd love to start with you. No secret that there are a lot of things out there you can haggle. And as a real estate agent, this is likely a commonplace. Uh, but let's look at the less obvious. Is there ever a time we shouldn't haggle? Are we taking money from other people when we do? Or should your pocketbook always be the top priority, would you say? Yeah, thanks, Kelly, for having me. Uh, you're right. Real estate is one of those places where people want to haggle the most. As soon as they're buying or selling a house, uh, they turn into a master negotiator. But I don't really feel like it's about protecting your pocketbook or taking it away from someone else. I think it's about everyone getting to the best deal possible. Everybody just wants the best deal possible. And without everyone being happy and it being a fair deal, there's not going to be a deal at all. And that is where kind of the problem comes in. And like you say, people should stop haggling is when you actually get to the best deal possible. The problem is a lot of people, once they get to that point, they continue to haggle and they continue to try to over negotiate. And I've seen in my 21 years of real estate, deals go south over one or $2,000, incredible deals. So negotiate the best deal possible. But when you see the best deal, it's time to accept the deal. Okay, that's great advice. So Eric, a lot of people think haggling is a little bit cringy, uh, but let's talk about what people do wrong when approaching it. Uh, should we fight every battle just because we can? I think we got a little insight there with our last answer. I think cringy is a gross understatement, Kelly. I can't stand this whole haggling thing. Like save it for the dishes at you know, your flea market and you're looking to buy some coffee cups. But it relates to any type of service industry. I'm just not a fan of that. I, it, number one, there's no way for you to know the price that you're being given if there's any profit at all. You could have somebody that could be operating on very skinny margins. If you want to do your research, if you want to go into um, any type of transactions, cars, real estate, anything else, if you want to go into it and look at multiple places and talk to multiple people, absolutely. But the thought of, of trying to talk somebody down off of a price where you have zero idea how much margin there is in that, Secondly, you're totally discounting the service that person is providing. There's no way to put a price tag like Ricky saying, I had 27 years in the mortgage business, same exact thing. You're totally discounting the service that person is providing. If you want to shop, save that for the Saturday mornings on around the corner when you're buying a blow up gym from your neighbor. All right. I definitely hear you. And I think that that's great uh, advice, Ricky. And I appreciate that perspective, Eric. So let's turn to our next topic. A lot of people are headed home today from Memorial Day getaway. So what if you saw this on your flight? Uh, this video went viral. Here's a look. Please don't be the people who fill up an entire overhead cabinet with your jackets and please keep them at your seat. It's an absolute waste of space. They could sit on your lap or most airlines have hooks. And to fly in 2023, please don't be the people who fill up an entire overhead cabinet with your jackets and please keep them at your seat. It's an absolute waste of space. They could sit on your Okay, so have you seen this? Uh, let's turn back to our panel. Jackets or coats, can we put them in the overhead without everyone else thinking we are being a jerk? Or does it matter if your coat is bulky and easier uh, to put up in the overhead than your seat? So, Ricky, I'll start with you. Yeah, no, I fly three times a month. I travel all over and speak, and I see it all the time. And I, and I do think it's a little disrespectful, honestly. We put all our stuff. I, I fly with my wife and daughter, and we put all our stuff under the seat like we're supposed like we're supposed to, and we put the big items up top. So I agree. All right. So Eric, what do you think about moving somebody else's? jacket or coat if it's already been stowed. Uh, if you have a piece of luggage that may fit, but you have to make some adjustments, do you think that's an overstep? Yeah, I agree with Ricky. I think it's insanely disrespectful. I think it's just a lack of awareness to recognize that people are packing their bags. They're, you know, they're trying to get everything they possibly can. You don't take up the space with your jackets. And it's funny because I travel quite a bit as well. And it is funny because when there are jackets there and somebody comes up to like move them because they're putting a bag in, you can see the person getting all disgruntled. It's like, come on, buddy. Number one, either put it in your lap. Number two, don't pack it or put it in your checked bag. Right. So I think it's extremely disrespectful along the lines of throwing elbows when you're sitting in the middle chair. You know, it's like, hey, that's my space. But I'm, I'm not a fan of jackets in the overhead space. Not for me. <laughs> Well, 
uh, Eric Rittmeyer and Ricky Carruth, thank you both for being here. We appreciate it. Appreciate you having me, Kelly.